Hey y'all, it's Bensie from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another garden project. So this is going to be kind of a whole thing. I don't even know how to describe it. I put this garden bed around this tree in last year when I installed this pallet walkway. My trash can and my vegetable garden are around this side of the house down here and I needed a really good way, especially at night, to come from my front door down to the trash can if need be and then during the day to come down and, and see my vegetable garden. Um, and that obviously includes this pretty little garden bed. But in addition to finishing off this garden bed, which originally ended right here, you now extended it around to where there's supposed to be a grill, I keep flowers there on my porch. I also had to deal with this situation because my entire front yard is on a slope and everything has to be graded. That is a big reason why I put in this pea gravel path in the first place was to help control the water as it ran downhill. So in order to put in this path, I also had to install this paver retaining wall to roll back the hill. And when I say I, I mean my mom, because we started working on this project and she was like, I'm doing the wall. And I mean, you can go watch the video. She did the wall. Um, things fall, let's say a meal over. But that has given me a pad up here for my car. And it has given me this new garden bed, which I was not planning on. But I'm excited because it's more planting space. And what do we want if not more planting space? Also, I love these wind chimes, but they are a little noisy for this video. So just try to enjoy them. I need to get a mic. Be planned. Buy a mic. Okay. Anyways, in order to finish off this space this year, I'm trying to decide exactly what this entire space is going to look like. So obviously I have woods back here behind my house, and then I have this giant weed field. Um, and this is not part of the new garden bed project, but it is in a way because eventually all up here under the car pad is just a big pile of pea gravel. It's not evenly spread out. So I'm going to bring that pea gravel down and around and I'm going to connect the path here and take the path off this way. So that I can actually take my trash can up to the street when need be. That leaves this weird little kind of triangle shape in between where the two paths will meet. This we need to cut out before it goes. Anyway, so I'm going to actually, you can see right here, I'm going to bring a little sweep of papers down. I have some more black edges here. a little triangle garden bed right here that I'm going to plant another hydrangea bush in and a few just annuals and things but my mom has two hydrangea bushes and a crepe myrtle that she has propagated from some of her plants for me and so I'm going to put this is my mom's way of showing where she thinks I should put plants she breaks off sticks and puts them in the ground so this stick represents where she thinks I should put the crepe myrtle. This stick represents where she thinks I should put one of the hydrangea bushes. Um, this stick <laughs> represents one of the purple bushes. I have three purple bushes if you've watched my annual planting video. I have six down here. Three are in the sun doing great. Other three are more in the shade not doing great so I'm going to move those three down here to this bed where they will get way more morning sun and should be much happier. So I'm going to put one here, one over there, and one on that side. From there I'm going to fill in with some annuals like these pinkish flowers and I have some cosmos. But before I can start planting in this bed all I've done so far is alliums, which will be beautiful when they grow in, but the foliage isn't great, which is why I put them at the back of the bed. I have planted a few um, 
box love seeds. We'll see if those come up. And then I need to actually construct this bit of the flower bed. I need to bring that pea gravel all the way around. And then I have to decide, uh, I'm going to start spraying the pea gravel down for weeds. And part of me wanted to go ahead and spray kind of this area. But I've been thinking lately, and this is completely, this is just me talking, so fast forward if you want. But um, I've been thinking lately, I really like some raised beds over here for pumpkins, for lettuce, for broccoli and carrots, more edibles. And then one just for dahlia tubers, because I really want to grow pretty tall dahlias and my actual flower beds are not conducive for that. Unfortunately, I have found everyone I've ever planted has died dramatically. I need better draining soil and more um, conducive space. So I'm thinking this would be a good space for that. It's big and open. I can construct whatever size raised beds I like. They'll be in the sun. Um, they're close to the house, so I can run water to them. And if I do that, I don't want to spray any kind of weed killer out there that could potentially harm those raised beds in the future. So I think I'm only going to spray directly on the pea gravel. I have lots of kind of weed killer that should not transfer from pea gravel to garden bed. I don't trust it, but my mom does, and she knows more about everything than I do, so I trust my mama. But this is going to be a long project. I will try to put on the screen what I'm working on, um, but I just figured I'd bring you guys along for the ride, because I really like to see how spaces develop, especially from zero to a full project. So if you want to actually see this go from nothing to this, Go back and watch the pallet pathway video because that's where we actually constructed this bed. Um, and hopefully next week, two weeks, I don't know how long this is going to take, we will have a planted up bed and a path that goes around and all kinds of stuff. I think it's probably, I'm slating, if we're going to do raised beds, I'm looking for like July. It is currently April 5th, 6th. So it gives me a couple months to figure out the rest of this project, but just get the weeds. Get all the weeds back there. So it either needs to be grass or raised beds, but the weeds have got to go. So we're going to get started. I think plan one is going to be just, I think I'm going to take a break and just kind of try to remove all the weeds around the area where I'm going to spread that pea gravel and then start spreading the pea gravel. Um, I also want to spray down any of the weeds in the actual pea gravel with the weed killer. So let's do that. Ready, go. <laughs> Biddy heard me. She said, I'm coming. You going to come help me? You would be a great pea gravel spreader. You could just roll over it, huh? Bitty bitty. I wish my other dogs were all off leash trained because they can't be out here off their leash, but Bitty's a good helper. Come on, baby. They love it here. 
ate salvia in this garden bed last season um, and then around my crepe myrtles and the crepe myrtle ones probably got to about a foot but the ones over here got literally three or four feet tall and in this bed I do not have any reseeded salvia but back behind the rows where the wind doesn't get I have quite a few babies and like right here right here right here right here I'll have like 10 or 12 right here and that's all I have so I don't I want to weed this section going forward when I have after I've gotten those seedlings out I don't want to disturb their roots too much and um, I actually put cool flowers in this garden bed last year in between the pink salvia and this year the, the cone flowers which are perennial are much larger so I think I'm going to leave the cone flowers and the guara there this year maybe put some zinnias in front of them that are shorter since the salvia got so tall here um, and put the salvia babies in the new garden bed just right across the path so it's the same kind of light they should do really well here as well um, and since they're you know they're self-seeding free plants um, it'll help fill up my new garden bed so I'm gonna go ahead now and start on at my black edging I'm going to try to lay out the black edging um, kind of where I want it I have one two three four I think of these papers left so I know I'm gonna need more of them to complete this little project but I don't know quite how many so I'm gonna to try to lay out the black edging exactly where I want it so that way I can kind of count how many papers I need and then go pick them up um, maybe today maybe tomorrow who knows kind of thinking today I want I want to get this going um, but once I can get this shape defined I can remove the pea gravel here and start bringing the pea gravel around. I also need to get water from that garden bed to this new garden bed. So I bought a large PVC pipe and I'm going to take up a few strategic pieces of this path, move the pea gravel, and trench the process. I'm going to put the PVC pipe in the trench. Obviously, then we'll rebury it. But that is where I will be able to put a hose under the path and it will come up probably almost right where I'm standing. Water this little path. It will go under the edging and into that garden bed and it will water all of this area. So that is a very important part of the project. So I need to get this part defined so that I can dig the trench and I need to do all this digging and weeding and foundational stuff before I start planting. So need water before I can start putting salvia in the garden bed and planting my pincushion flowers. And I'll need to have to fast because those pincushion flowers need to get in the ground. I may just have to bite the bullet on those and put them in and then if I have to move them, I have to move them. But I'm going to try this edging. I've never done it by myself. It's usually a two-person project, but I'm only doing two pieces. It may not be easy, but I think it's doable. So, wish me luck. So, when we put the black edging in last year, I was right off my knee injury. So, my brother and my mom actually did the whole project while I watched. So, I've never done this before, but what they did and what we showed you in the video was stand close to it. We need some of these to take the little picket things off. Not easy, but I did it. All right, so I'm gonna 
I'm gonna go get the other piece and I'm gonna rethink this real quick. So each end has two pieces and I'm going from one end to the other. Um, and when you take the end off, it ends up looking like this which isn't a problem because then the next piece slides in here and that's how they connect. So in the middle here, we'll have two pieces that connect. But if I take the pickets off on either end, then you have this weird kind of funky end piece, which is not a huge problem, but it's also not very pretty. Um, and it's not really what I want the end pieces to look like. And I literally, wasn't sure what to do about that. I was going to just try to kind of hide it under something, but I've done that over here and it doesn't really work. I did just think, however, that I bought a whole bunch of these extra pickets thinking I might need them for last year's project. And it's sitting in my watering can all year. There's no reason I can't just leave those connected and use the extra ones and then it'll be straight on that end, right? Like, that seems fine. I'm try that. Ooh, baby dance will be pretty. Right, y'all so we are done for the day you can see the sun's going down i got all the pea gravel spread i need just a little more for up here you can see this corner doesn't quite connect so i think i need a little more pea gravel for there maybe on that side of the car this is where i want to park my car but ideally the path is going to go all the way around this tree down there and connect right here. So I need to ring the whole tree with pallets and that will give me a dry, stable place to get out and unload everything in my car. But this bed is set now. And here is the new bed. So I'm not 100% sure if I love this connection. I could take that top part out and bend it just a little bit more in. But I do, I think, really like the pavers more than just doing black edging here or doing a combination of pavers and black edging. I could get one more paver for right here. I thought I needed 10, I bought 12. 13 was the magic number. So I think I might go back and get one more paver, but you can see this spot here where I sifted all the rocks out of. We had filled this little crevice with quite a bit of rock to get it to kind of fill in. So I was trying to get some of that rock out. I don't want to have to hit it with my auger all the time. Plus, I want it on the path. So we did pretty good. I'm going to have to fill this in with some dirt and I've got compost and um, you know, make it pretty like the rest of my garden beds. But overall, we did a lot, a lot today. Still got more to do. But I think tomorrow we will try trenching. I think I'm going to trench from like right 
here across so that we can bring the water over. If I can get the water over, then I will start planting. But I did not expect this bed to be almost the same size as that bed. I don't dislike it, but it's just not what I was expecting. So guess I will see you in the morning. I'm going to go make some dinner and take a hot bath. I'm tired and honestly, I'm kind of a hot mess. But, you know, got a lot done. I'm very happy with, I thought this pea gravel alone was going to take me three, four days. So I am very happy with the progress we've made. If I ever get raised beds put in back here, it'll look even better. But I'm going to go in for the night. See you in the morning. All right, y'all. So it is morning of day three of this project. We have got a lot done. I thought this was going to take several weeks. We've still got a lot to do, don't get me wrong. But today, we are moving on from the pea gravel and establishing the boundaries of the new bed to water because I do not want to have to hand water this. I've been having to hand water the top one and it's not fun. So I went to the Home Depot and I got this section of pipe cut. It was, I believe, an eight foot pipe. I thought I got it cut to four feet, but maybe I got it cut to five feet because by me, I mean my mom. I was in the garden section. Mom got the pipe. But um, either way, it's going to go right across here. It needs to come out on the other side of the pavers, but it needs to span the whole distance here so that when I'm walking on this path, I'm not crushing the hopes. So I did get this little six foot uh, hose section and it's just going to go through the pipe and out the other side. That way it is going to bring the water from the established bed to the new bed under the path without getting crushed. In order to do that, I'll have a shovel and I have this pickaxe thing. Um, I'm going to use that just to dig a trench. So I'm gonna move some of the pellet pieces. I'm gonna move the pea gravel. I'm gonna dig a trench and hopefully it won't be as hard as it sounds. I don't think it'll be that bad. At the end of the day, we're really just digging a bunch of holes next to each other. So we're gonna do that. And then um, what's left is to obviously put the water throughout the beds. That'll be as easy as just snaking it around. We will have to rework this hose because right now it goes around and through and it ends somewhere in the middle by the foxglove, not sure where. Hopefully it won't be hard to find the end, um, but that end will have to be reworked to end somewhere closer here so it can connect to the six foot hose. And then I have a 75 foot soaker hose to go throughout these two beds and hopefully that's long enough. Um, but before I do the soaker hose all throughout these beds, I've got my auger out to dig the holes where I'm putting all my big things in and then I'm going to plant those big things. It is Sunday which means it's a weekend which means my mom's off work so I need to get to that point so that I can go over to her house or the end of the day and get the crepe myrtle, one, two, three hydrangea bushes um, that are all offshoots I guess of her crepe myrtle tree. She had one growing out of a weird flower bed that she doesn't want. I want it. Um, and then she purposely propagated one of her beautiful hydrangea bushes for me into two baby hydrangeas last year. And then her big oak leaf hydrangea, which is beautiful um, and has beautiful white pink blooms, um, actually self-propagated this year. We went out and saw it yesterday and it has a whole little stand of almost two, three foot high babies. So we are going to transplant as many of those little babies over here as possible, um, right where the bucket is. So I'm going to dig those spots. When you're transplanting things, you really need to get them from point A to point B as quickly as possible. So I'm going to dig those holes, get the spots all ready, go over to mom's house, I'll bring you with me. We'll dig those things up. We'll bring them back over here and we'll plant them. And then if I have to manually water them for a day or two till I get the hose done, fine. But I think you should be able to get the hose done either tonight or tomorrow morning. But 
we're going to stop talking and we're going to get started on work. So, wish me luck. So we are at mom's house. Her garden is right behind you. I'll show you a little bit before we go. Um, we're going to be digging some agapanthus out of there too that she reminded me about. But this here is the baby crepe myrtle. So it, it's been growing for a year, maybe two here, and she just doesn't want it here. She has some beautiful crepe myrtles all around. Um, and what, you just don't want this one in this spot, mom? No. So she said I could have it, and it's a pink one, whereas both of mine are white, so I'm very excited. Um, this is her blueberry tree. We're going to try to get another blueberry so that she can start having blueberries. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge, yeah. But she only has one, so it's never produced berries. Um, since we're in the backyard, all the dogs are going to help us. All right, so we're going to see how hard this is to get out. It's kind of close to the edge. Mm -hmm. Is that that working? Nah, it's an old hole. I was going to say, I don't think you have water to this bed. No. She's never done anything to this bed. This is her carriage house, which we mainly use for antique storage for the booth. Just throw it away. Yeah, it's not working. Alright, so how far go out? About to there, yeah. So I just need to go kind of all around it. So I'll go down and then keep going down. We want to get as much of the roots as we can. Yeah. Sometimes transplanted things. Don't do well, but the more of the roots you can get, the better, better shot they have. Okay. It's definitely, it's not a huge tree, it doesn't have many roots, so we're just gonna, gonna get in the ground as soon as we can with some fertilizer and some water and we're just gonna hope for the best and I mean it's not something I bought. If it doesn't make it then yeah, I was a volunteer. That, it'll stink but it, it won't be huge loss. There's mom's garden though. She's saying, oh, yep, over there. Louisiana iris, the purple one. All right, he's in a pot. Yeah, these Louisiana iris here are from Nana's yard. Nana was my great grandmother, mom's grandma. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one. The guy down the street. A lady in Florida. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And mom is still, you can see, she's she's mulched in here, but she's still finishing out the bed. Yeah. But it's looking really pretty. Yeah, it does look good there. It looks good with the yellow iris, too. Yeah. All right, so what else is there? The oak leaf hydrangea and the agapanthus. Let's go show them the, the hydrangea over here that you propagated. Is that the right word? The one that you made for me. So this is her big hydrangea bush. Do you have any clue what kind of bush it is? There you go. And show them what you did. What we did was... Her lupin is starting to go to seed. I'm hoping to get some seed from it because it's very pretty. So there's the plants. You already put them in bucket. They're pretty little, but they're, they're there. 
some of these right here is this one. We took some of these long ones and we let's say she put it on the ground. Put it on the ground like this. And then we put a brick right here. And it made roots grow. And once the roots were big enough, she cut it off. And now I'm going to take them home and plant them. Not looking as good, but we'll see if it works. That looks like dead sticks. Ooh, look at that little snake. What little snake? Right there. Oh, yeah. Little baby. Ooh, I don't little love baby snakes, snake. but they're, they're good for the snake. garden, yeah. So we got these for you. There goes a streak. There goes another streak. We got a couple little baby salvia that did not know they were in there. And then this is the agapanthus that mom said is ready to be divided. Yeah, how do you do that? You just, you just cut it in half with a shovel or you have to dig it up? Dig it up and just cut it in half. Okay. Okay. So what do we do? The mulch stuff out of the way. Okay. And you can see. All the roots on this thing. Yeah, it has a lot of roots. Yeah, it does. It needs to be planted deeper. Yeah, it does. It's easier. Mom likes to just keep empty buckets in the garden so when she's walking around weeding, she can just toss it in a bucket. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It's funny. Coming up, maybe. Yeah, it is. It's because it was right on top. Yeah. We'll hold the planet deeper once we separate it. Okay, let's do this. On the ground. I could do it with the shovel. Yeah, we probably could. Yeah. Please don't fall. Oh, I could easily fall. We're clumsy people. Ah, oh, you get it honestly, girl. There you go. Good job, Freya. Run away. Just cut it right in half. Uh -huh. I literally took a bucket out for you and you put it in the stack. <laughs> sorry. I mean, it's fine. So sorry, Elizabeth. I would dig a better hole for that. Yeah, I'm going to. You do what you want. It's your garden. Okay. Okay, so this is mom's oak leaf hydrangea. It has, is it white ones that turn pink or just yeah, pink? Yeah, they're kind of whitish, pale, pink. and they turn pink as they age, right? They turn dark pink. And so it spreads by runners. Yeah. And you planted the main bush like three years ago? No, four or five years. Four or five years ago. And you can see like it shut off runners here and here. And all of these little ones up here. And then there's a whole section back here that's, I mean, the main ones above mom's knee, the shorter ones are anywhere from a foot to the ground. Yeah. But it's a whole little stand of them. So we're going to transplant as many of them as we can over to my house. I mean, they could stay here, but, but I want them. They don't, want them. Yeah. I offer them. There's no reason they couldn't stay here. It would just make this bigger and bigger and bigger and you know if I wasn't taking them she'd just leave them but this is the front of the house she has this little section with this fence in between her neighbor's house and hers um where this is and then she hasn't really got anything else up front she's still developing what she wants you might be able to see she has so she has a fence and she has all this cardboard over there where she's been suppressing weeds and grass to get it ready for planting.
mom is on her way. We left at the same time, but it is community day. And she just might miss a shiny mud kip. She doesn't make the rounds, so I'm sure she will be a minute before she gets here. She cannot resist hitting all the poke stops between her house and mine on the way over. That's not something you knew about my mom, now you know. She is a Pokemon fiend. So, we've got our spots. Hydrangea, Hydrangea. These are the two blue lace caps. Crate Myrtle's gonna go there. We're gonna try to plant that first, I think. Um, I think I might put the Agapanthus up there, but we'll ask mom's opinion. We've got our spot for the oak leaf down here. I did widen that hole since I think we have the big clump and two smaller clumps. I think it's going to take up, I knew it would take up a lot of room eventually. I think it's going to take up more room now than I thought. And then we've got the three holes for my little purple plants. I still need to go dig out of that garden and I've got the Nandina to replace those. So we're trucking. We're going to get all in the ground. Once we get all this big stuff in the ground, I can plant all the little things. So hopefully in the next hour, this will look like a real proper garden bed. I'm very excited. I'm gonna go grab some slow release fertilizer to put in the bottom of all these holes. In the front garden, really, I have what this long bed, a little better on the side, and the new bed. I don't have a yeah, huge garden, um, but this is the part that I put in last year, so it is now in its second year. It's, it is doing well, but this half of the garden, as you can see, everything's in the shade right now because it's late afternoon, it's like 4 30. Yeah. Um, but this side of the garden starts getting in shade at like 11 or noon that side of the garden doesn't start getting in shade until about three so this is in shade a lot longer than that half so uh, my three purple bushes what kind of what kind of bushes are those i don't remember and i looked at the tags yesterday when we were, i was at the store just to see and i still and i still don't remember it's like some weird really long vibe so regardless, um, the three I have over there are probably, yeah, they're, they're like this tall now. They're doing really good. They're not super bushy plants, but they're very tall. They're blooming. They look beautiful. This one doesn't look bad. It's blooming. Like this is a, this is a very respectable plant. This one is getting a little worse. This one is a little shabbier. And then this one on the end, I'm not even sure we can call it a plant. It might just be sticks at this point. I mean, it's got a few leaves on it. It's got five, five leaves. They're just five not leaves. thriving. Like, that's barely up to mom's ankles. This one's up to my thigh. Those ones are up to here. They're, they're really tall. There's they a few taller. Well, they have, yeah, I'm not, like, the bulk of the plant isn't, but the top spire is one top. So, they're not thriving. They don't love it here. We're going to move these three over to the new bed, where they will get a lot more sun and hopefully do a lot better. And I got three of these Nandinas that should be a lot happier here in the shade and just do better. So, we're just going to... And give us a little color. Give us a little color in the back of the bed because you know this skirting on the house is not necessarily the the focal point so the, the whole point was to have these tall purple bushes to 
grow up and out and hide as much of the bottom and give us a backdrop for the lower rows of stuff in the front. But let's go ahead and get them moved and their new homes and then we can get the Nandina in and then maybe one more project done. Okay guys, so good news, this hose works. I bought this one that's 50 feet. I wanted 25, but they only had 50 to finish off this bed. It's too big for this bed. And when I turn the water on to test it, it works great, but the water pressure is not quite enough to go from the larger diameter to the smaller one. So this right here, this hydrangea, all the way around, none of this hose got water. So even though you've already watched me struggle with it, I'm going to have to redo this hose. I'm going to return the smaller diameter one, that's 75, we'll buy a second 50 one. Two 50s should do both beds. And since this hydrangea, this crepe myrtle, and this oak leaf are my three biggest plants that I am most worried about, like, the salvia I have a lot of, it will live or it won't. They were all free. The alliums don't need much water. The agapanthus looks great. Pincushion look great. Um, the cosmos I planted over there, I will show you those in a minute. They look great. Even my purple bushes look much happier already over here and are already perking up. So hopefully they will grow really well in this bed. Um, so what mom suggested is I just go ahead and, and take it all out. <laughs> and instead of going all the way around this bed, up around the tree and ending here, which was our original plan, coming from here up past the oak leaf. I can even leave this probably the same. So I'll leave this bed here. And then I'm going to come up and instead of going that way, I'm going to ring the tree and the hydrangea first. I'm going to go this way and then that way. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But I think that's the plan that will get water to my three most important things first. Um, and we'll go from there. If I need to dismantle this bed and just come straight up, then I will. Otherwise, I'm going to try not dismantling at least this bed and just taking this straight over and around and then reworking the second hose in this bed. But for now, I did forget I have a few more things. I have these lily bulbs. So I will put a clip here. But if you guys have watched my channel for a while, and if you've made it this far into the video, you're invested. Um... You've probably seen my sweet orange cat 
Her name is Tiger Lily, and she I've had her since I was 16. She's 14, um, and she she passed away last month, and it's been really hard. And so my dad sent me a beautiful bouquet of stargazer lilies. My mom bought me these two bags of stargazer lily bulbs. They're not actually, they're oriental stargazers. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and put those in this bed, I think. I have a few more larger areas here and one right over there. I'm going to put two groups there. One, two, three groups here where you'll really be able to see these and they can fill in and take up space. And I think that'll be a really nice little tribute to her. Thanks, Mom. Let's get those in the ground and watered in. And then I do have, last but not least, a wisteria vine that I bought that I'm going to plant um, right up here to go up this tree. And wisteria is very invasive in certain places. This is one of them. But I am not going to live here forever. This tree is going to die eventually. They're thinking they're going to take it out in the next five to six years. I'm not planning to be here in six years. So if I plant wisteria on this tree, I'll be able to enjoy it for the next couple years while I'm here enjoying this garden. And then it won't do any, it won't do any permanent damage. So that's my plan. I'm going to plant these and then go fix my hoses. I really wanted to finish this today, but probably going to have to do the hoses tomorrow. Unfortunately, my, my hardware store is next town over. So if I go there, it'll be dark by the time I get home. But we can plant these. We can plant the wisteria. We can water it all in. And then tomorrow, I'll come out and fix the hose and give you the end recap. I was going to show you real quick before this gets too long. It's already too long. I did plant the other six pack. I had two six packs of Cosmos over here. I transplanted this coneflower. He was right back here. So I moved him up here. That's why he looks sad. And then I started my swoop and I went just right through and Coneflowers are really tall, so they'll peek up and out. The gara is beautiful, and it will keep getting bigger and bigger each year. But it is a spring flower. So these adorable little gara flowers um, will not last. In about a month, they'll be gone. And then the cosmos can really fill in and around the coneflowers. So hopefully that'll make this a pretty little bed. And then I transplanted these to Angelonia. If you watched my... Um, last tour, my March tour, I had four Angeloni over here, the four purple ones. They never started growing. It's been a month. They still were brown. So I moved these two Angelonia because I did not listen to mom last year. She told me not to plant anything here. I wouldn't be able to get back here. I did anyways. And I regretted it because I couldn't get to the back of my flower bed. Sorry, mom. I should have listened to you. So I, I listened to her this year. I put actual stepping stones down and I moved the Angelonia over. So this right here is a nice little swoop of purple Angelonia. And my blue steely faced Angelonia is coming in nicely. So there you go. One more thing you never needed to know about me. Okay, so here's our bulbs. You can see that some of them look really good and even have shoots coming out the top. Some just have a little bit of growth. Some have like no growth. And this one broke off, started making his own growth. So we have a whole array of things, but most of them have growth or shoots, which is a great sign for this time of year. I should have planted them a while ago. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break them up into five sets of three. I might have, I think with the little baby offshoot, I might have two that I can plant a baby group in between the two and make a little swoosh. So I like to break them up. That way I know I have like, I compare this really good one 
with this not so good one with a kind of medium one and make a nice little group. That way I know I'm gonna have at least one in each group that hopefully will flower and grow and be all that he can be. If that makes sense. This is totally not necessary, but this is how I like to do it. Put these three little ones together. Then we'll put these two together. So that gives us one, two, three, four, five good groups, little baby group. And we will go ahead and put these in the ground. I've already dug my three holes over here. They need to be about four inches deep. And that includes your compost. And then you can put them, you don't want to put them on top of each other, but you can put them kind of close if you want a close grouping. The closer together you put them, the closer your plants are going to be. And then cover them over. Make sure they are nice and tight in there. Sorry, I'm trying to hold y'all steady. And then last but not least, should have written on this, but I didn't. Mark that bad boy with a flag. I will probably write some out later that have their names that I can come out and replace them with. But this way, when you're watering them in and watering them every day, if you're doing it by hand, you know exactly where your plants need water. Let's go ahead and do the rest of them. I'm gonna do, like I said, a little swoop here, one, two, three, and then over on this side where I put the Osmocote, I'm gonna do a swoosh of two with that little baby group in between. And that'll be nice. It'll be echoed on both sides of the bed. And I did put some slow release fertilizer in the holes, but not as necessary for bulbs, but all plants benefit, all plants benefit. All right, so here is my wisteria. He was $6.99. I got him at Tractor Supply. Go figure. It says you want to dig a hole large enough to encompass the roots without bending or circling. Set the plant in place so the crown is about one to two inches below the surface and then cover with soil. Water thoroughly. So according to this chart, I'm a smidge late in planting it, but, you know, mom always says, it's better in the ground than out of it. So he may not grow or bloom too much this season, but he'll get established and start growing. And then hopefully next season, we will have a beautiful show, especially because all the wisteria right now is already in bloom. So, all right, this project just never ends. I did set up another umbrella for my little coneflower and he's already over here. So killing it. Killing it, y'all. All right, y'all. The new bed is finished. So we have planted so much more in this new bed than I planned to when we first started out. What was it? Five days ago? Today is day five. First off, I thought just swishing out all this pea gravel would take me at least two weeks. So... Five days is great, but I know at this point I've got 30 video clips, so this is going to be a long, long video, but we'll give you a little tour of how the bed turned out, and then next week, week and a half from now, we will be filming our April garden tour, so you will be able to see it again in a week or two. I'm doing monthly video tours this year, but let's go ahead and just get into this bed. So this bed was already completed when we started. We spread all this pea gravel around and down the path and we created this bed down here from scratch. If you need a reminder of all the things we did. So up here, right when you get out of my car, we have one, two of our purple bushes. This is the smallest one that we transplanted. They are already looking so much happier up here they didn't suffer any transplant shock which is great because the hydrangeas and the crepe myrtle definitely did so hopefully these babies will just be happier up here and they will grow and thrive and that will be great so then i have a little swash of cosmos and cosmos cosmos 
should get big and bushy and they're kind of willowy airy plants but they have I mean you can see just these beautiful blooms that get really tall 18 to 22 inches so they should be a really pretty just stand of color right up here then we have all our allium bulbs that I planted in our spring bulb video still not 100% sure I know people say that alliums foliage gets yellow and looks dead but like there's no bloom stalks to me they look awful I don't know if that's normal so if you know anything about alliums are these normal states for allium leaves that one especially over there looks like crumpled and dead so we'll see if we don't get any alliums I guess we don't get any alliums um then we have one two <laughs> there's the other one pink petunias up in this bed we have a little swash of our tiger lilies on either side and then we have our whole salvia patch down there this side um you saw me plant the wisteria vine so hopefully that will grow up and on the tree you saw me plant the lily bulbs this i actually refixed the hose without you watching because it was just too much and I planted all of these zinnia seeds. So hopefully we will have a nice shorter pop of color down here around the agapanthus that we got from mom's yard. Our poor little crepe myrtle still just, he looks so sad. Still not crispy, like all the leaves still have life in them. I've scratched the bark, he's still green inside. So, you know, I'm not giving up hope. Crepe myrtles have shallow roots and they do transplant fairly easily. My mom's done it a bunch of times, but this is a pretty big one and he had hardly any roots. So there's just, you know, say a prayer, but don't know if he'll live. We've got my little pin cushion flowers. I tried to grow these in a container last year and they did not do well. They just died straight out. Um, I think they had too much sun. So I, I babied them and I put them all over. I had them more on this side and they were wilty, wilty, wilty. So I just kept moving their containers and keeping them really watered until I found a spot where they were standing up all day with their water. And this was the spot. So I think they get just enough shade here that they're happy. I think too far over they weren't, it was too much shade. They weren't happy there. So Hopefully this will be the perfect little micro environment for them and they will just grow and thrive and love their little lives. People who have success with these just say they bloom forever and I love them. These are a pink variety. They don't look quite as blue purple as the normal varieties, but to me they don't look pink pink. Here is our sad little hydrangea i still think he's dead but you know sometimes hydrangeas just amaze you so we will see if he comes back then you can see from where we transplanted all our baby salvia they are all standing up and looking pretty good this morning we have a whole swash starting here comes down goes around here and then comes down into this bed and then this bed look at this a eh? My oak leaf hydrangea is standing up this morning, so he's doing much better. And B, there's a little ladybug on him. That's sweet. Ladybugs are a sign from my husband, so that is a very encouraging sign. Maybe he is looking over this one. As long as my little fish umbrella holds up, we're going to probably leave that up for maybe five, six more days. Hopefully the umbrella will be down for the April tour. And then we have one, two, three petunias and another little purple bush under there. I did remember I had this globe kind of thing um, that I got last year. I haven't known what to do with it. I saw someone grow a petunia in theirs though, and it grew up and spilled out all the openings and looked beautiful. So I actually moved it so that I had it the petunia planted inside and if that petunia will grow up and over all of these edges that'd be great 
So we do still need to probably bury this hose, but I don't know. What do you think, Betty Betty? Originally, like I told you, I was going to tie this whole system into just the soaker hoses that I have on this side, but I have three soaker hoses on this side. So to continue that over here is pretty far. That's a pretty long way to go. And as you can see, this first soaker hose, great, loving it. But it's taken almost 20 minutes of constantly running to finally get water to the end of the second hose. I'm not sure if it's already struggling on two hoses. I don't think pushing it through three hoses to get to five, I don't think that's gonna work. So I think we're going to have to leave a hose all the way here. So we may trench this in so it's not so ugly. I might just put it under the house, we'll see. Not 100% sure, but for now, I'm going to leave it exposed because if there's any problems and I need to switch it out, it's easier with it exposed. So I'm gonna leave it for at least a week or two till I am sure that all the kinks are out of this watering system. But you can see our little transplanted angelonia. I did put some cosmos over here in our coneflower transplanted is looking much better today even. I did put this umbrella over it yesterday because you're so wilty. And if you were using a regular umbrella instead of an in-ground umbrella, I find that if you put some water in your watering can and then you stick that handle down inside, the watering can is heavy enough to hold it straight up and down. And then my watering can is tall enough that the handle can't fly out. The, the wind has to catch it just right to get it out of there. So it works perfectly, not for long term, but for shading a little plant for a couple days. This is my solution. So that is it. I will be back in, like I said, a week, week and a half, two weeks end of April. It is the middle of April today, the 14th, to show you my April garden tour for the month, and you will see how this bed's doing. Pray that my crepe myrtle is still alive, but so far so good. I am going to bring you right down here up the path. Still need to move that. He goes up here to complete this path. Come on, Biddy. Let's show him the angle from over here. So this is the angle that I love that wall at. It looks so pretty going around that little curve. And once I get all the pallets finished and I can complete the pallet path all the way around, I have a full circle, it'll be great. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, you are a MVP because I don't even know how long this video is going to be, but it's going to be a beast. So hope you enjoyed it. If you like this long format of video, please leave me a comment down below and let me know. I could have easily broken this video up into five or six parts, you know, planting the new bed, creating the new bed, pea graveling the new bed, a whole little series. But I decided just to do one big video, even if it was long, show the whole process start to finish because we've really done all those mini videos when we put in the path, when we put in the edging for this bed, when we composted this bed. So I didn't feel the need to do that all over. But people always ask, you know, what's the process of starting a new bed from start to finish? So here's the process. It is long, but all in one video. Hope you liked it.